After what seems like an eternity in the wilderness from football's top table, a Champions League semi-final clash that doubles as a Milan derby just somehow feels… right. These are two clubs that have defined so many eras of the game and seeing them repeatedly dumped out in the group stages or competing in the lower tournaments just somehow feels… wrong. Now there's a whole other story and indeed another video on why this is the case. Italian football's toxic love affair with money and, by extension, the subsequent lack of it has meant that Serie A as a whole has really struggled to compete with the rest of Europe. But the brilliant thing about football is that for all the financial side has seemingly become everything, sometimes teams can just push themselves well beyond merely the station of their own spending power. Thus, despite an outlay of just 50 million euros between them in the last 12 months, or about what Man City spent on Calvin Phillips on the other side of the draw, both Milan clubs have fought through to a Champions League semi-final clash. And one that might well become symbolic not just for the players or the fans, but for the San Siro as well. In all likelihood, these will be the last major European Cup knockout games to ever be played there. Put simply, if either team wants to make progression in this competition a habit once again, it'll almost certainly need to be knocked down. But why Buldo is one of football's most iconic venues? This is the story of the final years of San Siro. The basic argument for the total destruction of Stadio Giuseppe Miazza is as follows. In order to keep up with their European competition, Milan and Inter must increase their incomes. To do this, both clubs need a new stadium. Either they demolish and rebuild at San Siro itself, or they leave and build elsewhere, in which case the current ground would almost certainly have to come down anyway. The reality is it can hardly be left standing around in a state of decay, and there would be almost no way to repurpose it. Plans to raise and replace this stadium have been circulating for years, but the same questions remain. Will they do it? Won't they do it? Why will they do it? And when? In our most recent issue, 442's Tom Ginoy travelled to Milan itself and uncovered a tale of footballing royalty and architectural majesty, of political gridlock and bureaucratic inertia, of burning mopeds, and, inevitably, of Silvio Berlusconi. You can read the entire piece and, of course, many more in the new edition, available now from the link in the description. But the key here is this. In 2022, Milan were bought by US-based investment group Redbird Capital. The 1.2 billion euro price tag was a record for a European football club outside the Premier League, and the prospect of a new stadium with all of its attendant money-making potential made up a sizeable part of that project. And now, the owners want to push on with what they paid so much for. Time, you see, is money, and Redbird Capital want to make money from sellable naming rights, lucrative concessions, hospitality lounges, offices, concerts, and NFL games, all revenue streams of which the existing stadium offers next to none. San Siro in its current form is certainly not swamped with amenities. Inside and out, there is very little to be found in the way of comfort or commerce. The barren landscape that surrounds the ground is only punctured on match days by burger vans and people selling scarves and souvenirs. There are no cafes, no shops, no restaurants, barely anywhere for fans to congregate safely, and certainly no areas for families or children. Football as a spectator experience is virtually unrecognisable from 30 or 40 years ago, but in Milan, almost no compromises to the modern game have ever been made. To some, including fans of both clubs and tourists alike, this is what makes the stadium so important. This is why preservation as a time capsule of a different age should matter. But to the owners, this isn't a positive. This is paralysis, and one shared by the country's government after a 2020 investigation by Italian heritage authorities found no cultural or artistic reason to enforce any form of preservation on the stadium. In a story of so many lasting uncertainties, here are a selection of straightforward facts. The stadium will host the opening ceremony at the Winter Olympics in 2026. Salah's second and final term as mayor concludes in the same year, meaning Milan will have a new municipal governor. The current lease deal between the city and the two clubs, the basis for Milan and Inter's tenancy at San Siro, expires in 2030. The fact is, there are a great number of possible endings to this story. Plenty of them are plausible, but many involve a gloomy climax for the Stadio Miazza. If one thing is true, it's that nothing is settled yet, but the dark clouds are forming nonetheless over San Siro, and time is not on the stadium side. To be blunt, if you've never been, go soon, as the future of a footballing icon is hanging by an ever-thinning thread.
When Inter fans dumped a moped over the railings of the San Siro's second tier in a 2001 game between themselves and Atalanta, a curious trophy appeared in the Curva Nord. A moped belonging, so the tale goes, to the opposing capo and captured in a pre-match scuffle. They would never have managed it had it not been for the stairless access provided by the stadium's iconic exterior ramps. Nowhere else in world football would this legendary terror story, or act of hooliganism comprising theft, arson and criminal damage, depending on your viewpoint, have been possible. And to some, that's a reason to burn the whole thing down and start again. But football is entirely defined by its stories that could only happen to one club, or to one manager, or in one rivalry, or even between the walls of one stadium. Lose those wonky and often problematic cultural touchstones, replace them with sleekly designed concrete revenue streams that appeal to everybody and nobody all at once, and you lose something of the game at the same time. And so, for fans of either Milan club, this semi-final is about so much more than the mere progression to the showpiece main event in Istanbul. It's now about the legacy, the fate, the history and the future of their very home itself, and that is a game of football that could simply only be played in San Siro.